How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I've just got sort of the second attempt really I suppose at um, Cabin Fever as I kind of got halfway through it last time got a bit distracted by flying a sledge cabin all over the map and uh, yeah I was, I've been kind of getting a bit of footage for the rest of my favourite trucks tonight playing around with a few of them, seeing which uh, yeah, just making sure they're in the right order I got a bit carried away messing around I kind of didn't get all the bits of footage that I wanted to get so I just wanted to kind of yeah, have a chilled video again. I've been meaning to do this um, cabin fever, especially because, see again, every time I'm just doing something random, it keeps adding the cabin fever mission, like it's in the top right corner. For whatever reason, for the second time now, when I go and do the mission, the uh, that's like the one time it hasn't actually auto-selected it for me. But yeah, I've already delivered one of the cabins, which, where I am now, I'm just crossing like, the break of the lies but I'm staying near the edge to the left of me now kind of more behind me about now was where the first cabin was I've got to take it I suppose to the left of where I am now kind of where I go on the way to the cliffs um, sort of halfway between where I am now and where you find the TUZ16 that's where I've got to drop it off to so uh, yeah of course got a loaf on me got them horns with a vehicle got to bring that with you I'm only going to be towing this um, sledge cabin thing Again, I hope they do actually add some type of sledge trailer. I think it would be pretty cool. As you can see, took a took a bit of good old damage. Suspension, fuel and a tyre. Sometimes in the videos I've like kind of been noticing this and testing it myself recently. The dolphin seems like it takes quite a lot of damage, but I think it's almost like a victim of the fact that it goes at a very nice pace, like the quicker you go in the more likely you are to take damage but it just again with the damage it's been I believe since about Rift or something like I just don't really find it accurate sometimes I can absolutely go flying over like those big lumps of broken ice and I don't even take one damage or anything which is where I actually wouldn't mind taking you know like a little bit of damage I suppose to kind of make up for wear and tear because you're not actually going to be driving it for like 10 hours a day or something um, yeah it's like sometimes it's nothing other times it just absolutely deletes your entire truck which is a little bit uh, yeah a bit erratic like I said it, it isn't even a case of where it bothers me it's just it takes the uh, I'm trying to think how to put it it's like sometimes I can set off on a mission and kind of set myself the challenge of like well I'll try and be a bit more careful and get there without breaking the truck with the way this damage is it's like I've done it before where I've been going safe and fine all the way along and then you hit just some random stupid object at two mile an hour and it deletes everything to where that's basically why I just bring a loaf everywhere with me usually obviously with a roof rack I mean I normally bring a loaf anyway for like a spare winch and all sorts but more so in the last month or so I've, uh, you'll notice like I've had a lot of roof racks on my loafs and that's why because not just the Dolphin there's all sorts of trucks I go in obviously if you're in something with a advanced special gearbox it's not quite it's rarely going to get the speed really to uh, smash itself to pee it doesn't always mean it won't though I've had a few again trollish hits even on like the Colob when I was in I think I was in the high low so I really wasn't going fast at all and I just hit the corner of like say that rock on the left and uh, yeah it deleted my suspension which is like not only not realistic but yeah like I said it just takes like the the mystery or the effort out of trying to make it somewhere without deleting your truck I just it's like part of the game now it's just like yep I'll take I'll take something with me a rip well not usually a repair trailer because then when I've got to the other side of the mission it's kind of like I'm now going to drive all the way back with the trailer or dump the trailer there which often costs more and I don't mind that part I still think it'd be pretty handy now if you could just recover trailers but fair enough that's part of the game I can also do like a maintenance add-on if I didn't want to take a trailer and all sorts so yeah I can live with that but nonetheless it uh, makes the damage a little bit less I don't know interesting bit less beatable so got to this light it's like the little place in the corner of the map where the water is you can see like the battleship over the other side of the water um, 
yeah, you cut like if you cut along the ice all the way, you get to a point where it looks like there's like an underground submarine base or something. You can't get across there, so you have to loop round, go through that like gully in the cliffs that I just drove through. <laughs> While I was here, <laughs> I can't help myself. I uh, just fancied having a go. I was just looking and I was like, well, I reckon I could drive the loaf up on top of that. So I wanted to give it a go. What I don't like though, and it used to be fine at the beginning of the game, but say now I'm trying to attach the back of my loaf to say the right hand side of that cabin as we're looking at it like the rear end winch but it won't let me anymore it offers me all kinds of winch places but yeah it, it kind of removes some of the more handy winches which again this is what I was saying the other month about like finding a balance between a game that has difficulty and a game that's fun and I'm not saying this game is fun but that's what I was saying with say Grand Theft Auto versus Saints Row. What Saints Row understood very well was just make the game a laugh, have fun with it, don't restrict you from stuff. Like I say, you take a truck to the garage on Grand Theft Auto and it says, oh, you can't upgrade this truck or this vehicle. And it's like, well, why? <laughs> I want to. Like, did you not think? You, you were able to program the message saying, I cannot upgrade this vehicle, but why didn't you just program a goddamn engine with more power in it? Like, it's a game. All you got to do is up the like the power that's it and um yeah with this game they've kind of limited some of the winch points which just makes it a bit more of a like an unnecessary effort it's kind of like i will find my way around it but it's not really a case of i don't know like a puzzle like they've not stopped it for say unrealism sakes as in my winch is now going through the sideboard of the dolphin when i've got the loaf back in the sideboard i could winch to the front of the dolphin through the cab of it to the front of the loaf but luckily for me loaf is a goddamn horse with a vehicle so uh, yeah I figured it out I believe I just showed you there as well I, I purposely flipped the loaf at some point oh it's now actually I did that on purpose because this is like the easiest quickest way I've found to just jump back in the sideboard I mean I've only edited like five or ten seconds out it was just me reversing up in the dolphin nothing crazy but when you attach a winch to the side of the loaf and then the other side of the dolphin and drive forward, yeah, it just kind of flicks your back end up, winch to a tree, scoot yourself in the sideboard, and then I suppose I cut the bit out there, but I stuck a winch to the front of the loaf and just dragged it round sideways. One of my wheels was still poking over, but you see, it's a goddamn horse of a vehicle, that's why you take it with you. Got extra fuel in that, which I believe I cut out again, but I'm about to uh, add all the fuel, the rest of my repairs, into the dolphin, and we're ready to go got the cabin. Like I said, it'd be pretty cool if it was like a trailer. Imagine that, but with no roof on it. You could just stick, I don't know. I suppose just like that with no roof on it probably wouldn't be the most useful thing it would to me, because I'd just stick a load of loafs in there and go flying around, but yeah, some type of sledge trailer would be pretty cool. I do like that it leaves these trailers at the end, though. Like, once I completed the mission, it didn't just take them away, which I'm glad, because I'll find something to go flying around and uh, mess around with them. So yeah, now I'm on my way back. Go and drop it off. While I'm going, I was thinking I'll tell you another story. Uh, when we were kids and that, with Dave again as usual, because it usually is. <laughs> In fact, this one is actually kind of off-road related-ish. We're on bicycles. And basically, where we used to live, like a mile or two out of the village, it was like, it was quite a hilly place really. And there was these couple of fields and there was a gate blocking it off, but there was like this big off-roading track. And it was... a good mile and a half long I would say probably more like two miles and uh, it was quite a steep hill as well and like on the one side you had this pretty straight steep hill uh, there was a little stream at the bottom and then there was like a hill up the other side but it was a bit more bumpy and weavy not as fun like we used to like nailing down this uh, long straight off-road path and yeah there, like I said there was a gate blocking it there was a little sign saying it's some kind of off-road path I assume there'd be some type of off-roading club around the area that has a key to the gate and uh, when it's you know when they turn up and that they all go off roading but the rest of the time it's locked off from like cars can't get in there but there was a little gap at the side where you could get bikes or and stuff um yeah so we all used to like just riding around I suppose the village the countryside messing around and uh, Dave for whatever reason he must have broke one of his bikes <laughs> so he ended up borrowing my mum's bike but it was like a bike she had from when she was a kid I believe and uh, it was like an old school 
sort of woman's bike with the one bar at the bottom. By the way, why do they have a man's bike and a woman's bike? And why has the man's bike got a bar there that can fucking explode your bollocks if you fall off the bike in the wrong way and land on the bar? Like, if anything, I'd rather I'd rather ride a woman's bike, I reckon. Like, I'm more likely to be turned into a woman having an accident on a man's bike. And then I will need a woman's bike. So, yeah, I don't know why that is, but anyway. He borrowed my mum's bike, and the bar at the bottom, like, it was just a pretty, it was a pretty beastie bike, like, well made and everything, and in the middle of it, it had, a, like, this bolt pin thing you could take out, and the bike folded in half. I assume to pack it in a car or whatever, I have no idea. But anyway, up to this point, this bike was pretty damn mint, all things considered. And, uh, yeah, anyway, Dave had to ride that, because he'd fucked his own bike up somehow. And uh, we were riding around the village, well, out the village, got to this track, and as usual, me and the ad, <laughs> we knew Dave would be a willing participant, so we said we'll have a race down this, uh, like, again, this big, long, straight off-roading hill. And, um, yeah, it was on the edges of fields, and because various off-roaders had been through there, they'd kind of cut channels out with their tyres, so, I mean, it wasn't, this is kind of in the middle of nowhere, as in, like, it wasn't getting off-roaded on often, if the various tyre tracks or channels that were cut into the mud were fairly likely to be there that summer sort of thing and it's like yeah around autumn winter and spring they must have done more off-roading in the summer it was just baked solid mud so it wasn't really much i would say much use for off-roading anyway but yeah we used to get like pretty rapid down there like well over 30 mile an hour i'd say in the 40s easily um like i say it was pretty steep and uh yeah we uh me and ad we knew dave <laughs> dave would be a willing participant so we said we'll uh, race and then uh, we started setting off. And like I say, it was like a track along the edge of the field. So it was pretty straight, pretty steep. Um, it was kind of like muddy and a bit rocky. But all things considered, because it had previously been levelled out the same as fields, it was pretty also like flat enough that you could yeah, get some pretty decent speed up. So we started racing Dave. Me and Ad were like sort of a little bit behind him because he was flying ahead, paddling like a mad one. And next thing, I see him start to get a bit of like a speed wobble. He was in one of the tyre tracks and once you're in them, you can't really get out. So if you start leaning to the left or right a bit, it's like, you know, where you start trying to put your foot down <laughs> really quick while you're on a bike, trying to stop yourself from falling. But anyway, he started falling. Suddenly, like, there's just a like a Tasmanian devil. There's like a big dust ball that appeared around him and his bike. And all I could see from where I was riding behind was like every now and then a leg had come flying out the dust and then a bike wheel, and then an arm, and then another bike wheel, and so on. And it was like, he was just rolling down this hill. This ball of dust was more like following him. And, uh, yeah, the lucky sod, he stopped about a foot and a half off the stream at the bottom. And uh, it took a bit of a beat, and he had some pretty decent scrapes on his knees and elbows and everything. All things considered how fast we were going and everything. And the fact that it's like... Uh, well, yeah, muddy, like, baked solid mud and rocks, and, like, it's a bit rough. Um... Yeah, he'd done pretty well, <laughs> so we started walking up the other side, because the other side was kind of a bit more twisty, not really as, uh, yeah, like we prefer just going flat out down this first bit of the hill. And we got to the top, and uh, that's the point where he sat on the bike, <laughs> trying to convince himself and everyone else that it'll be fine, because he knows he's probably going to get killed when he gets home. Um, yeah, and this bike, <laughs> the front wheels bent, bent like a banana, like round to the left. The handlebars were twisted, the seat had like been snapped off so if you'd sat down there was just like a metal what's left of the metal pipe sticking up there like, um, yeah it'll end up going up your ass so you don't want that uh, the rear wheel was kind of like all the well half the spokes were stripped off it and I remember this clearly because I was so fascinated with how it was working but when he was riding like while the spokes were above the middle of the wheel that were kind of suspending him he was driving fine but every time the wheel rolled round and he'd like push down on the spokes that'd bend them up a bit He'd sit down further, so when he was riding along, he was going up and down like a bloody cartoon. <laughs> and it was like, this thing was absolutely fucked. Like I said, he's trying to convince himself it'll be alright. It's like, no, <laughs> that's a goner. But yeah, it was. Uh, he'd only had the bike about half an hour. And it had gone from an absolutely brand new, sturdy, solid, well-made bike to like an absolute banana piece of scrap pretty damn quickly. And that's just, yeah, that's what life was like with Dave. <laughs> Why it's always funny. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back soon.